Yes. So to finish the unit, we're still going to write the equation of a circle. Okay? So at the top of the page, to write the equation of a circle with center, so we're going to focus today on that center radius form, not the general form. Okay? We need the center and radius in order to write it. So in this case here, when you're given um, a center and a point on the circle, what don't you know? So here's the center. Here's the point on the circle. We're missing the radius. So we need to find or calculate the radius of the circle. How do we find the length of the radius? Length, what formula do we use? Yeah. Distance. Now the distance formula is different depending on the segment that you have. Okay? If you don't have graph paper, if you don't have a picture, you will always have to use a formula. But if you have a graph and your radius is horizontal or vertical, remember you just count the squares. So for a slanted segment, like you see in this picture here, the distance is the square root of, let's see if you can write that in at this point. We'll need our distance formula for the test. Do you have that memorized? So x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, and then the square root of the sum of those squares. Remember, on a horizontal segment, you just have the run going left to right. So your x values are changing, but your y values are not. So the distance of a horizontal segment is the absolute value of your x coordinates. And then for a vertical segment, again, moving top to bottom or the run, and if your x values are the same, to calculate the length, we take the absolute value of y2 minus y1. Should be absolute value symbol. And then we simply substitute the center and radius into the equation and simplify. So why don't you draw a picture that represents example number one. Let one of my kids play with the compass. Oh boy. Is that better? Nope. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to use the board compass to draw a circle. You don't have to. But I need to, before I move the compass, I know it doesn't have to be drawn to scale, but I'll know where my center is. So we have circle P. So P is the center. And the coordinates of the center is 2, 0. And it passes through the point 8, 8. And it doesn't have to be drawn to scale, but 8, 8 is right 8, up 8. Or over right and up, not necessarily 8. Right 6, up 8. So we're going to use the distance formula, so let's write that out. And instead of putting D, I am going to put R equals, because the length of the radius is equal to square root of, go ahead and fill that in, the difference of your x's, so difference of 8 and 2 squared, Thirty-six plus sixty-four is a hundred, and the square root of a hundred is ten. Good. So the length of the radius is ten. Now I take this and this to write the equation. So the equation for circle P with center two zero is going to be x minus two squared. Remember, it's the opposite. 
And I can write the y minus 0 squared, but y minus 0 would just be y squared equals radius squared, which is 100. Okay, go ahead and draw your picture or label number 2. Okay, number 2. So we have a circle drawn. The center, it states, is um, negative 3, 4. And it passes through the origin. Write an equation of this circle. So it passes through the origin. That's our point on the circle. And the center is negative 3, 4. Now, I want to show you another method rather than using the distance formula because we have a picture of it, even though we did give ourselves a picture before. If you don't remember the distance formula, make a right triangle. Okay, so the radius is here. So one leg of the right triangle I'm going to use as the y-axis. I'm going to draw it straight across. And when I make a right triangle, what is the length of the vertical leg? From here to here. Four and here to here. It's going to be the length three. I know the x is negative three, but we actually count the squares. It's going to be three units. So to find r here, let's just use Pythagorean theorem. So three squared plus four squared equals r squared. 9 plus 16 is 25. Square root. Don't forget to show both of the roots when you take the square root. And then let's reject the negative. Now we have a radius of 5. So now the equation, we need to take a look at the center and the radius. And since the center has an x value of negative 3, it's going to be x plus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals r squared, which would be 5 squared, or 25. So does the point 4, 4 lie in the circle whose center is at the origin and radius is <laughs> radical 32? So I will draw a circle. So we want to know the center is at 0, 0. I know the radius equals the square root of 32. And does the point 4, 4 lie on the circle? Remember, in every equation for a circle, the x and y's represent all of the points on the circle. So to, to determine if a point is on the circle, we need the equation first. So we can substitute and then do the math. So if I write the equation whose center is at the origin, that would be x squared plus y squared equals, if the radius is radical 32, we square radical 32 and we get 32. So we start by writing the equation, and then to see if the point 4, 4 lies on the circle, we plug it in. So is 4 squared plus 4 squared equal to 32? Yes. So does the point, you just want to make sure you go back and answer yes. So 16 plus 16 is equal to 32, so the answer is yes. In the next section here, it says to write the equation of a circle given the endpoints of the diameter. So are we given the center here? No. Are we given the radius? No. Can you find, so if I scroll it up, so we're missing both the center and the radius. How can you find the center of the circle? So if we know the endpoints of a diameter, because the diameter always passes through the center. Sarah? How will we calculate or find the center? The jumps? Yeah, I saw some of you do the jumps, but what formula? Midpoint. Midpoint. So 
So because this is a radius and this is a radius, and all radii are congruent, correct? So to find the length of the, or to find the center, we use the midpoint formula. And then how do we calculate the radius again? Distance. So find the center using the midpoint formula, and then find the radius by using the distance formula. And we already wrote the distance formula on the other page, so let's just add the midpoint formula here. So that's the average of your x's and y's. So x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Um, and I actually, in looking at my notes, I see to find the radius. When we actually use the distance, that's going to give us the length of the whole diameter. And the reason why you want to use the two points that were given and not the midpoint that you found is because if you made a mistake in calculating the center and then you use that center to calculate the radius, you've now got two errors. So always use the points that are given. So if I know the diameter, how do you find the radius? Divide the diameter by two. Okay, so let's draw a picture for four. All right, so we have right and then down and then right and then. It doesn't really matter, though. So I'm going to say 18, negative 13 is here, and 4, negative 3 is here. So let's start by finding the center. So we're going to average the x's. So we add them up, 18 and 4 is? 6. What's the sum of 18 and 4? And then 22 over 2? 11. 11. And then negative 13 plus, I noticed, I forgot my negative, negative 13 plus the negative 3? Nope, they're both negative. When I first wrote it, I put in the positive, but both of the y values are negative. So negative 3 plus a negative 13 is what? Negative 16. And then negative 16 over 2 is negative 8. So now we have our center. Now we're going to calculate the diameter first and then cut it in half. Because even though we can calculate the radius right now using these two points or these two points, if you had made a mistake in the center, you're then going to make a mistake for the radius. Okay, so let's actually calculate the length of the diameter. So x2 minus, I'm going to subtract this way. 18 minus 4 squared plus negative 13 um, minus a negative 3 squared. Check the substitution. 18 minus 4, negative 13 minus a negative 3. So we end up with 14 squared plus, now this turns into what? Negative 10 squared. And what is that radical? Well, 14 squared is 196, right? Plus 100, 296. Now we need to know the largest perfect square factor of 296. See some people looking at a table possibly on their calculator. What's the largest perfect square factor of 296? Is it 4, 9, 16, 25, 36? 
Raise your hand when you've got it. Remember, if you go to your y equals and type 296, x. Yeah, Ethan? Four. Four times 74. So it ends up being 2 radical 74. So our radius is going to be 2 radical 74 over 2, which is just the square root of 74. Now I'm running out of room, so I'm going to write the equation up here because our direction said to write the equation. So we know our center, let's plug that in. So x minus 11 squared plus y plus 8 squared equals, Thomas? 74. Yeah, whenever you square, so to find the um, r squared in the equation, once we square this, they're inverse operations. So 74 is right. All right, and the last one, write the equation of a circle whose diameter, so you have a graph. It does say the use of the accompanying grid is optional. We're not going to, uh, we are going to use it, so take out optional. So anytime you have it, graph it. So plot the points, 1, 5, and 7, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 5. And to finish for today, volunteer to tell me what the center would be. What's the point? Yeah. 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with a radius of 3 and 3. Yep. So we have a center of 4, 5 and a radius of 3. You don't have to graph the whole thing. We just use that line to do or calculate the center and radius. So now we have our final answer, x minus 4 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 3 squared or 9.